Once upon a time, Cooper Cup was the most valuable receiver in Dynasty. What has happened to his value? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuk. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $150 if your bet wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. Check her out on Twitter at Kate Majuk. And make sure that you go read her at Behind the Steel Curtain and Pro Football Focus. On today's show, we are finishing our division by division recap by talking about the NFC West, the biggest winners, losers, and trade targets. We've got a lot of winners from this division, especially on the Rams side. But Kate, Probably, actually not probably, definitely the player that lost the most value among all four of these teams has to be Cooper Cup. Yeah, kind of a a brutal overall season. Now, that's not to say that there weren't contributing factors to Cooper Cup's disappointing season. But you look at his production in 2023, and obviously there was also the breakout of, of Puka Nakua. But across the board, we saw a pretty dramatic drip in efficiency for Cooper Cup. I mean, like, again, across the board, catch percentage, yards after the catch, perception, yards per route run, um, fantasy points per game. It all seems to make sense, right? Because Cooper Cup, he is 30 years old. He is going to be heading into his age 31 season. But Marcus, what I think is really interesting about Cooper Cup and his 2023 season is that when you look at, like, certain performance metrics like he actually performed pretty darn well like in terms of uh you know route speed he literally ran the highest max speed of his career per nfl next gen stats this season uh second highest route depth of his career he had a career low tight window target rate career high wide open target rate so like when you look at some of the advanced metrics, they tell a pretty different story about Cooper Cup's 2023 season than you might have guessed, especially considering it, the drop in efficiency. So I think the first question is, do you believe he can bounce back as a more efficient target in this offense in 2024? And then the second elephant in the room comes back to his age. Can he continue to perform at a very high level with, the emergence of Puka Nakua and with the fact that he's another year older. So I want to talk about his dynasty value and where he ranks and all of that. But to answer your question, do I think he can bounce back? I do. I, he made it through this season I and mean, he was banged up. Like there's, there was no doubt that he was banged up, but he avoided a major injury, avoided having to have surgery in the off season. And to me, that's great. Like if, if you can go into the off season relatively healthy, I feel pretty good about you the, the next year. I also feel good about Cooper Cup because Matthew Stafford also avoided a major injury. Remember at this time last year, Matthew Stafford missed what the last half of the season. And we had concerns whether Matthew Stafford was even going to come back. So those two things together do make me feel better about Cooper Cup's dynasty value. Well, where is his value right now? It's dropped quite a bit. Okay. As of August, 2023, he was 16th overall. Now he's all the way down to 56 overall. So you're talking about a drop of 40 ish spots. He's being drafted as wide receiver 32 in your dynasty leagues behind players like Jaden Reed, George Pickens, Devonte Adams, Jackson Smith, and Jigba Roma Dunze, who's not even in the NFL yet. And I'll be honest, like that price there makes me intrigued. I, I think I think I would be willing to pay those price that price to go get Cooper Cup and hope that I can squeeze one or two more 
good, solid years of production because Kate, now, now you're not looking at him as, okay, he needs to be my number one wide receiver. He doesn't even have to be your number two receiver. He can be a flex play for you. And I like that. I'm kind of in. A flex play with some massive upside. And that is kind of all you can ask for when it comes to a, a flex play, especially and Cooper Cup, you know that he's kind of the still the go-to guy, even in terms of uh, Puka's emergence on the scene. It was still Cooper Cup that was kind of the the favorite for these red zone targets, these highly valuable situational targets. Now, I think the final thing that people are going to be hung up on is, of course, the age. He is going to be 31 years old this year, as I mentioned, and the history of you know production, although you know, production for wide receivers into their thirties, uh, you know, a, a much more palatable thing than maybe the running back position, but a wide receiver has outproduced 15 plus fantasy points per game at the age of 31 or higher on 18 occasions dating back to the 20 or the 2000 NFL season. Four of those occasions, it was Marvin Harrison that mm-hmm. did it. Okay. Another four of those occasions were Terrell Owens. So you basically, you just have wide, 11 wide receivers to do it. Two of them were NFL Hall of Famers. So like, I, I think it's like, do you believe that Cooper Cup can fall into this bracket of elite aging performers? And I think he can. Yeah, I think he can too, because he's playing on a good offense with a good quarterback, with a good head coach. And there's just a lot of trust between Matthew Stafford Stafford and Cooper Cup. And even in the playoff game, it was just clear that Cup was just so banged up and he was still getting targeted. So I know he's not a long-term play anymore. I know you probably can't expect anything more past the 2025 season. But I just like him better than some of those other options that are available in the same range. So yeah, I think especially of him if I'm in a more contending window, I think I am willing to trade away a Jaden Reed if it means I can get Cooper Cup. I, uh, I, I think we're going to get a nice bounce back season here from the former All Pro receiver. Yeah, I mean this is a, a very productive offense, uh, tied for the the ninth most passing yards, uh, still top of the league, thirteenth in uh, overall pass attempts. Like this is an offense that I think is going to undoubtedly be productive as long as Matthew Stafford is the quarterback and. If I'm being honest, I could picture Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford's like the end of their careers kind of overlapping in a mm-hmm. way. And I think that's how it should be. But you mentioned the price, Marcus. That is so much more palatable when you are expecting him to perform as a depth play rather yes. than a core asset of you know your your dynasty roster. And maybe what you do with Cooper cup, because the price is so palatable now is you trade for him and you just play him whenever he's not on the injury report. But when he's missing multiple practices or he's banged up, you just flip him out for somebody else who maybe has a more interesting matchup or whatever. When you're, when he's being valued at wide receiver 32, you have the flexibility to do that. But if you feel like he's a top 10 receiver and you have to pay that kind of price to get him, you end up just leaving him in regardless of the situation that's no longer the case. And I think that's why he's actually becomes a little bit of a value now in your dynasty leagues. But Kate, one of the reasons why you might be a little bit hesitant, hesitant, excuse me, to go out and get Cooper cup is because there's two breakout stars in this offense that are just at the very tippy top of our dynasty rankings right now. Let's talk about those two players next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all of your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. All you have to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. 
Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, Kate, let's talk about some of the biggest winners from the NFC West, and they both happen to be on the same team. I've got to say the Rams did a pretty stellar job uh, this season prepping us uh, in our dynasty rosters for some breakout candidates. I mean, who should we start with? Kyron Williams or Puka Nakua? Because both of them were among the biggest risers in the NFL, not just not just for fantasy, but literally biggest risers in the NFL. Um, I guess we can start with Kyron Williams because, you know, running it. backs are hard to find, but finishes the overall RB six this season, averaged 20 fantasy points per game efficiency metrics off the charts. He had a 90.5 PFF rushing grade, um, like just absolutely stole this job to the point where, I mean, Cam Akers wasn't even on the roster anymore and oh. he looked good, man. And Marcus, I don't know if there's any player that gained as much dynasty value. It may be besides Puka Nakua as Kyron Williams did, because right now he's being ranked in inside the top 10 dynasty running backs and i don't see any reason why he shouldn't be he fell to the fifth round coming out of notre dame and i think a big part of that was the fact that he ran a pretty slow 40 yard dash mm -hmm. but we also know that who who cares who who cares who cares about the 40 yard dash marcus because kyron williams played some of the best football that we saw at the running back position in 2023 Kyron Williams had over 1,300 total yards from scrimmage and 15 touchdowns in 12 games last year. And that includes a game that he left early. When he was on the field, the only running back that was more productive on a game-by-game -game basis was Christian McCaffrey. And there was a lot of games where Kyron Williams outproduced Christian McCaffrey. He is so locked and loaded as this team's running back. There, there's one thing about Sean McVay, once he finds a running back that he likes, he's just going to stick with that guy, right? He's not rotating him on and off the field. There were several games this year, Kate, where Kyron Williams was the only running back to take a snap for the Rams. And with him still having two years left on his deal, it makes him one of the most valuable dynasty assets we have. And in our recent batch of ADP from Dynasty League Football, here are the listed running backs that are being drafted ahead of Kyron Williams, it's B. John Robinson, it's Brees Hall, it's Christian McCaffrey, it's Jameer Gibbs, and that's it. Like we are, that's a top five running back all day long. I'm all in, and you know who else I am all in on, and so is everybody else. He's the dynasty darling. It's Puka Nakua, who just, man, like it, he absolutely stole our hearts. He stole the show uh, coming out in his rookie season. He was so incredibly productive ranked top 10 in targets receptions uh, receiving yards pff receiving grade yards per route run like what didn't puka nakua do as a rookie to to earn that that standing I, I think the only argument you can make against puka nakua probably lies with the lack of draft capital investment and even then, I, I think when you're looking at a, a offense led by Sean McVay, where I do think like once he finds his guys, he goes all in on those guys. Puka Nakua is that guy. I'm a little confused by Puka Nakua's dynasty value, to be honest with you, Kate, because we just saw him have one of the most productive receiver seasons ever from a receiver, let alone a rookie receiver. Like he just blew every record out of the water. I, I'm not sure why he's not a top five dynasty receiver. Like I get Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and CeeDee Lamb being ahead of him. You could make an argument that Puka should be ahead of every other receiver because of how productive he was. He's only 22 years old. Like if he would have been like a 24 year old rookie, I, I understand it a little bit. He's 22 and he's tied to Sean McVay. Like that's it. That's all I needed to know. Like, great. Sign me up. Okay. So you're taking Puka over Garrett Wilson. I am. I'm on our St. Brown. I am. And that one's closer. The Wilson one, I, I, I don't get. The, the Wilson one for me is just based on because he has top 10 draft capital. but It's draft pedigree 100%. But it's I mean, we've seen Garrett Wilson two years in the NFL now. I have no idea what this Jets team is going to look like 
in 2024, let alone 2025 and 2026. I don't think the Jets have any idea. I don't think they do either. So I give me Puka, who I just know is going to. I think Puka is going to outproduce Garrett Wilson by a mile in 2024. So why why should I have him behind him? Okay. Um, how about somebody near and dear to your heart? Uh, Puka Nakua or CD Lamb? Is that where you draw a firm line in the sand? I don't draw a firm line in the sand. I think I, I, you could talk me into putting Puka ahead of CD Lamb. Now, I, I would prefer CD, but I think if somebody offered me that trade straight up, I'm probably like having an hour meeting with myself and talking <laughs> it over. I mean, that just tells us where we are at with Puka Nakua. And like, I think the, again, if Puka Nakua came out and he was drafted, let's say, you know, sixth overall we probably wouldn't even be having this conversation because it would have been a wide given. receiver too. He's probably wide receiver too, Kate. I mean, uh, like, honestly, if he's not drafted in the fifth round, Marcus, I, I don't think there would be any questions about Puka Nakua, but I do think that there's some of that kind of longstanding bias that you're going to get, you know, just from draft capital alone, you know, why did he fall, et cetera, et cetera. But you know what? Like, sometimes teams miss sometimes oh, teams yeah. miss and uh many teams missed on puka nakua but the rams did not so congratulations sean McVay, on your uh new franchise wide receiver uh and the reason why he ends up making our biggest winners list is at this time last year kate his overall adp was 225 okay now it's 10 and I think it should be even half that. I think it should be top five. And it's absolutely wild. No, I mean, we've been saying this for a while, but lit literally no player in the NFL gained more dynasty value than Puka Nakua this year. He moved up to what? 200 and I'm not good at math. 210, 215 spots this year. It's pretty big rise. Pretty big rise. And again, not, not unfounded. I mean, Marcus, 215 spots. That's about 18 rounds in a fantasy draft. That's how much he rose. So like for context there, that is what Puka Nakua did. He deserves every single bit of it. And yeah, Puka Nakua is an easy top five dynasty receiver. Ignore the draft capital. It doesn't, once you hit, once you're out of the draft, it doesn't matter anymore, right? Like no, maybe you no. get some extra chances uh, in the league to prove yourself, you get more opportunities in the league to prove yourself if you have that high end draft capital. But if you're performing and you don't have it, like who cares? I will also just mention kind of going back to Cooper cup a little bit. One of the reasons why I think this offense can support a top five receiver, a top five running back and another top 30 receiver right in Cooper cup it's because Stafford is really good. And we should also mention that Tyler Higby got hurt in the playoff game against the Lions towards ACL. We'll see when he comes back, but I've got to believe, Kate, he's going to be at the very best a PUP candidate, missed the first six games of the season. I just think rather than them bringing in another tight end, they'll just condense their offense down even more to just Puka Kyron and Cooper Cup. And that's going to be what it's going to look like for the first two months of the season. No complaints for me. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the one player in the a NFC West that we are trading for this off season outside of Cooper cup. We'll get to him next. This episode is brought to you by better help. What is the one thing that you would do if you had an extra hour in your day? Would you go for a run? Would you take a nap? Would you read that book that you've been wanting to get to? A lot of us spend our lives wishing that we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so that you can do more of it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for any reason at no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash today to get 10% off your first month. That is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P 
dot com slash locked on. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. Every day is on Monday. Kate and I will be back to break down all of the happenings at the NFL Combine. We'll talk about some of the biggest winners and losers after all the drills come in. So make sure you guys tune in for that. But let's wrap up the NFC West by talking about the player that we are trying to acquire this offseason. Yeah, I got to talk about Kyler Murray. And now, Marcus, you can speak to Kyler Murray a little bit more. You're, I think you're feeling a little bit more bullish mm-hmm. on Kyler Murray than I am at this point. But I also don't know that we can realistically like deny that he's a potential value at this point. Right now, most recent dynasty batch of ADP, QB9, um, going just behind Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, uh, right ahead of Dak Prescott, Jordan Love. I'm probably going to take Jordan Love over Kyler Murray at this Fine. point. But I do think that like in terms of total upside, you know, the the upside's there. And they also have some draft capital that I think they're going to go out and get him some weapons here. Tell me why I should buy into Kyler Murray as a, a potential value here in our dynasty leagues. Because we know that when he's healthy, he's a top five quarterback basically every single week. And even last year, coming back from the torn ACL in a new offense, after he shook off some of that rust, we saw in the past, you know the final five games of the season, he was really productive. If you're watching with us on YouTube right now, you can see the numbers. 216 passing yards per game, 31 and a half rushing yards per game, eight touchdowns, three interceptions. While those numbers aren't going to blow you away, I want to rem- to remind people that this is without Hollywood Brown, who missed that entire stretch with an injury. This is with him throwing to Rondale Moore and Greg Dorch, and even Michael Wilson, their third round pick from Stanford, was banged up during this time. The offensive line was a mess because of injuries, and he still went out there and produced. I think now that he's a full year removed from the ACL injury, and it's the second year of an offense, he's not having to worry about are they going to draft a quarterback to replace me? No, he can just go out there and be Kyler Murray. I think he's going to be in for a huge season. And Kate, you mentioned the draft picks. This team is going to add probably Marvin Harrison Jr., maybe Malik Davis with the fourth overall pick. And that's just so much more exciting to pair Kyler Murray with a weapon like that. I think he's a screaming value at Q- QB9 right now. And let's be honest, if you get Malik Neighbors in, instead of Marvin Harrison Jr., like – what a consolation prize. Uh, you know, you're, you're going to take that all day. He's going to add an element to this Cardinals offense that they don't currently have. I mean, the the depth was just kind of decimated. I don't think Marquise Brown is a wide receiver that I'm going to entrust as sort of like my lead guy. I really like Michael Wilson a lot, but, you know, a big knock on him has been health throughout the entire longevity of his career. Mm-hmm. He wasn't even healthy as a rookie. Like, there is an opportunity for a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr. for Malik Neighbors to come in and immediately be a target hog. And both of these wide receivers, I think, are pro ready to the point where they are going to raise raise the floor for Kyler Murray. Another thing, you mentioned the rushing production over the last five weeks, average over 30 rushing yards per game. Like we cannot understate enough that like this guy was returning from a torn ACL and To have that kind of rushing production right out of the gate, I thought that was really encouraging. Yeah, and I I would assume that's only going to go up, right? Like maybe he won't be quite the same runner that he was earlier in his career, but like if I set the over-under on like 38 rushing yards a game, I mean, you're probably taking the over on that. And if if you're just getting four points every single week just on his rushing, which by the way, he didn't even score a rushing touchdown – if he gets back to seven or eight rushing touchdowns and 40 rushing yards a game, it's just such a cheat code and he gives you such a higher floor. And now with Marvin Harrison Jr. likely coming to Arizona, I think the ceiling is only raised as well. So he's somebody I wouldn't be surprised if in your dynasty league, whoever's been holding on to him, maybe has soured on him a little bit. If you look at dynasty league football right now and you look at some of the quarterbacks that are going after him, such as Trevor Lawrence, I wouldn't be surprised if you could flip Trevor Lawrence and get Kyler Murray plus just based off name value and name recognition. It's another reason why I'm going out and getting Kyler Murray this offseason. 
I love it. The upside is tremendous. As we know, Russian quarterbacks are that cheat code in fantasy. And, you know, I, I really hope that what we're going to see this off season is this team start to build around him and give their franchise quarterback a chance to, I don't know, win some football games. I, I would think so. I mean, they started to win some football games down the stretch. They beat the Eagles, uh, right? Beat the Steelers, your Steelers. Uh, so we'll Excuse see. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me, Marcus. I know. It's, it's been a rough week already for Steelers <laughs> fans. I don't want to make it worse. Uh, all right. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every single day. Go check out the YouTube channel. We post videos every single day over there. Check those out. Go download the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available on all platforms. Follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Majuk. Check out her work at Behind the Steel Curtain and Pro Football Focus. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy all of the combine coverage. And we will be, we will be back on Monday to break it all down.